Hello and welcome to another episode of MCTV News. I'm your host, Anna Lesberg. And I'm Benoit Wandler. On today's show, Davina Bullen brings us a scoop on a book launch from local author Riley Quinn. Victoria Dalton takes a look at Grade 9 MCHS band program. Sophia Shavoka and Julian Andrews showcase their skills at Alberta Provincials entry. And Liam Weeks brings us an interview with a reality TV contestant. But first, here's our top story. We are past the May long weekend, and in Mournville, that can only mean one thing. Planting season has begun. One source of yard plants for area residents is Deb's Greenhouse, which is located just west of Mournville along Highway 642. Reporter Skylar Boissonneau traveled there and brings us this report. Deb's Greenhouse, located just two minutes west out of Mournville and right off of Highway 642, has been in business for 12 years and four years at this location. People come from all over Alberta to shop Deb's three bay and recently paved greenhouse. I come from generations of people that garden professionally. My great grandpa was a berry farmer in Oregon. My grandma, when she retired, had an acre of strawberries just for fun. And um, uh, gardening was just a huge part of our life. It was, it was normal. With over 750 plant varieties to choose from, there's no shortages in selection, ranging from vegetables, seeds, to annuals, and even perennials. New varieties of plants are always being grown and added to the mix. Deb's Greenhouse is always posting informative videos and can be found on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. We have a lot to offer. We really believe in education and we want our customers to go home with the plants that are right for their area and ones that they'll be happy with, as well as ones that are um, the right maintenance level for them. So if you're a new gardener and you want something easy, you know, we kind of have a selection we would direct you to. And if you want to try something a bit more challenging, we've got something for you as well. For many years, we've actually had a planting station where customers can come in, bringing their own containers or purchasing a container from us. And with help, if they need it, our team will help them design a planter and plant it on the spot. Work in the greenhouse starts as early as mid-February, and there's always something to be done. A few new projects were started this year, including an extension to the greenhouse, as well as a beautiful secret garden built just outside the main greenhouse for everyone to enjoy. Something here at the Garden Centre we really believe in is that we celebrate children, and that kind of seems a simple statement, but I have four children, and when they were little, shopping was really difficult. It was really difficult to go to a greenhouse to shop. Uh, they're often awkward, they might have narrow aisles, you can't push a stroller easily. So we made it our mission to make sure that our garden centre was not just family friendly, but a place that would celebrate small children. And the garden is an extension of that. So the garden's filled with little fairy doors and playhouses um, for children to adventure and discover. Every little child that visits gets uh, a skeleton key, a little tiny key, and that's their key to the secret garden. And um, it's just such a delight to see them playing in it. It is like magical for kids, it seems like. Everybody and their kids love to go out there and get their pictures taken. And, and I think the nice thing is it's got a variety of plants, but it also has, has those same plants if you want to buy them. Deb's Greenhouse is the perfect place to come on a beautiful summer afternoon. Make sure to come here for all your plant needs and just to come and be happy. For MCTV News, Skylar Bosner reporting. Welcome back. This week we've seen some extremely high temperatures in the Mournville area resulting in several heat warnings issued by Environment Canada. Here to see if these above average temperatures are going to continue into the weekend is our very own meteorologist Benoit Wandler. Thanks Anna and yes these temperatures are going to continue throughout the country all of this week so here we are uh, up in Whitehorse we got 13 a little bit of rain uh, Yellowknife 15 with uh, quite a bit of rain Vancouver is 22, Regina is 34, that you got to have air conditioning down there. Winnipeg, 32, uh, air conditioning is recommended as well. Uh, here we have 22 in Toronto and 22 in Montreal with some rain and some thunder. Calwood, 7 degrees, kind of chilly for this time of year. Uh, 25 in Halifax and 21 degrees in St. John's. On to our provincial temperatures here. In high level, we got a mix of uh, rain and clouds in... Uh, high level in 26 degrees, Fort McMurray is 28 degrees, 
with a little bit of rain. Grand Prairie is 25 degrees, Edmonton is 30 degrees, as well as Red Deer. Uh, Calgary is 31, Medicine Hat 36, air conditioning is recommended once again. Banff is 28 degrees with mixed sun and cloud along with Jasper, uh, Jasper at 21 degrees. On to our current conditions here. We got 27 degrees today with wind blowing northwest at 24 kilometers an hour. Relative humidity is 41%. Sunrise was just after 8 today and sunset was at 927. It is going to be at 927 tonight. Friday we got a high of 24 tomorrow and a low of 10 with a little bit of rain. Uh, Saturday is 20 degrees and with a low of 10. Again, a little bit of rain there. Sunday is a high of 19. Monday is high of 15. It's got probably the coldest day of the week. Tuesday, a high of 18, a little bit of cloud. Wednesday, 18 with a low of 11. And Thursday is all rain with a high of 17 and a low of 10. Back to you, Anna. Thanks, Benoit. Up next, local author Riley Quinn has had a success with his book series, The Lost Boys Trilogy. With the third book being released earlier this week, reporter Davina Bolin had a chance to sit down with him to discuss why he took up writing as a career. June is the month of summer, the end of school, but it also is the month local author Riley Quinn will be releasing his third book, The Dark, in the Lost Boys Trilogy. A story filled with adventures, battles, and tests of courage, Riley explained how he got his inspiration. A dream, in fact, of boys in a boat going down a river. This was the pivotal moment for his writing career, that he has wanted to become a reality. I've been writing since I was about seven years old, and it's always been a hobby of mine that uh, kind of became a serious hobby the older I got. And then a couple years ago I decided, well, why don't I finish a book, because I'd always, I'd write 10, 20 chapters and then give up on it. And I decided, let's finish a book, put it out in the world and see how it does. And uh, it's all just been moving forward from there. With his first two books of the Lost Boys trilogy a big success, Riley cannot wait to show his audience the end of the story. I'm excited to have this trilogy wrap up and people see the, the intention of where these characters were going to wind up and how the story was going to wrap up. Because there's a lot of mysteries through books one and two that don't get solved until you get into book three. The Dark can be found in Chapters Indigo across the country, as well as Amazon.ca. In Warrenville, businesses such as Higher Grounds, The Flower Stop, and the Warrenville Library sell copies. They are also sold at Seasons Gift Shop, The Book Shop on Perrin, and Chapters in St. Albert. With the conclusion of the Lost Boys trilogy, many are hoping for his work to continue. I actually just about a month ago started working on the brand new next series with my editor, but it's going to be young adults as well, a little bit more in the sci-fi direction, but uh, yes, definitely continuing, uh, continuing to write. With the third book being released on June 1st, many people are itching to read the conclusion to this incredible series. For MCTV News, Davina Bolin reporting. Here are your school announcements for Thursday, June 3rd. Are you interested in having a career, career in policing? Well, you're in luck, because the Edmonton Police Service is hosting a Youth Recruitment Academy for Edmonton area high school students. This includes presentations from police units such as K-9, Air One, Traffic, and Public Safety. It will be held at St. Joseph Catholic High School from July 6th to 9th. To find out how to apply, contact Mrs. Christensen. As well, grade 12s that are attending post-secondary next year, there are many scholarships available. These can be found on the website scholartree.ca. Just a reminder to all students using the student parking lot, please slow down. Students are, out, are walking out there and people are pulling out in their vehicles, so you need to re remember to be cautious. Remember to take your time when entering and leaving the parking lot. All grade 10, 11, and 12 students can apply for some awards that are offered at a rewards night in November. If you're interested, please pick up a package in the front office. The due date is June 11th, 2021. Do you have a summer job? Are you interested in earning credits while you work? Registration for work experience will start tomorrow for grade 10s and Monday for grade 11. See Mr. Lazard if you have any questions. If you have not already done so, please hand in your course selection forms for the 2021-2022 school year. These are important to make sure you get the courses you want for next year. They can be handed in at the front office and there are extra copies available if you need them. If you bring your skateboard, longboard, or scooter to school, please do not store them in classrooms. They can be kept in your locker or under the stairs by the library. Provided COVID restrictions are eased, the 8th annual Fred Sharman Memorial Hiking Trip will take place this September in Banff National Park. If interested, contact Mr. Bowdestein to get a permission form. Spots fill up quickly and are handed out on a first-pay, first-serve basis. For these and all other school information, keep connected by listening to the daily announcements, logging onto the school's website at, at www.mchs.gsacred.ab.ca, or by following the school on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. As well, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel by searching MCTV Mournville. 
One of the most technically demanding, yet most rewarding classes offered here at MCHS is undoubtedly band. Reporter Victoria Dalton had a chance to sit down with grade 9 band class and their teacher Miss Cormier and files this report. Today, we are at Moynville Community High School to interview several members of the grade 9 band. Upon asked why they joined band and stick with it, the students and teacher gave positive responses. Uh, initially my parents made me, but I actually do enjoy it. I joined band because I've been playing since about grade 5 and I just always enjoyed it and music has always been a passion of mine, so it just seemed like the right thing to do. Because I love it. I school and uh, I've always wanted to be a teacher, so I thought that was a good mix. Why is band enjoyable exactly? Thankfully, we also have those answers for you. Uh, I just enjoy playing music and it helps me develop my musical talents and skills. I think it's just really cool to be able to play your own instrument and make your own music and play these sounds and be able to know exactly what it is and why you're playing that. Well, I think it's the whole family atmosphere. We're all like a, a group that we grow together from grade 9 to grade 12. Band is a nice class because the people in there are nice and the teacher knows what they're doing. Yeah, I'd say it's a nice class because you get to spend time with the people that are in band and play instruments and make music. I want to inspire students to be able to enjoy music as much as I do and that's why we need to keep it continuing in our school. But like all fun activities, there is some cons. Let's hear from my guest what these cons are. The only thing is sometimes we get so excited about the music that we don't listen to Mrs. Cormier and then Vanderm gets a little bit loud. Just noisy. You gotta be prepared for the noise. Um, even as a teacher, I gotta be prepared that it's gonna be a noisy class sometimes. Would these students take band again? What would be the reasons behind it? I would take band again next year because like I said, I've been doing it for a while and also because it's just, it's a really good class to be in. It helps me with my music outside of school and inside of school and it's just a really cool class. I I can use band as a credit, as an arts credit to get into university. And finally, why wouldn't they take band again? Let's find out! Depends where the division pulls me. If I didn't take band again, it would be because I had another class that interfered with it that I really wanted to take more, but I'd probably most likely take band. As we have learned, the band program at Moynville Community High School is a very developed and cherished program. This is a report of Victoria Dalton with MCTV News, over and out. Welcome back. Here with all the latest scores, including the NBA and NHL playoffs, is our very own sports analysis, Anna Lesberg. Thanks, Benoit. Last night, the NHL round two of the Stanley Cup playoffs continued. Montreal beat Winnipeg in their opening match 5-3 to three to take a 1-0 lead in the series. Colorado required overtime to take down Vegas. Final score was 3-2, to two, and the Avalanche take a 2 to nothing series lead heading back to Sin City. In the NBA, three teams advanced to the next round of the playoffs. Philadelphia beat Washington 129-112 to win their series four games to one. Atlanta ended New York's playoff hopes with a 103-89 victory. Utah finished their series with Memphis winning game five, 126-110, and the Mavericks edged closer to a series victory with a 105-100 win over the Clippers. They currently lead that best of seven series, three games to two. On to the majors, the Blue Jays edged the Marlins 6-5, the Nationals beat the Braves 5-3, the Chicago Cubs dominated the San, Di San Diego Padres 6-1. Houston had a 2-1 victory over Boston, and the Rockies doubled the Rangers 6-3. MCHS has competed at the annual Skills Alberta competition every year since 1999. In events ranging from automotive repair to hairstyling, students are challenged with projects to test their knowledge of various CDS disciplines. This year, MCHS had nine students qualifying for the competition, including four from the MCTV program. Coming up next, Sophia Shavoka and Jillian Andrews' entry in the video production category that earned them a ninth place finish based on the topic. You are getting ready for school, but something doesn't seem quite right, and nothing is going as planned. Wake up. You're late again. Go ahead, I know you're hungry. Don't worry, you're not alone. You're late again. Miss Sophia, wake up, wake up, wake up. 
Hurry up and eat your breakfast. You're going to be late for school. Here's a look at upcoming events in the Mournville area. This Tuesday, the Alberta government instituted phase one of the province's reopening plan. This allows outdoor gatherings of up to 10 people and outdoor patio dining has resumed with members of the same household. Personal and wellness service appointments have resumed and retail service capacity has increased back to 15% of fire code restrictions. Phase two and three hopefully follow shortly but are based on hospitalization and vaccination rates. June is Recreation and Parks Month in St. Albert. From June 1st to the 21st, use the hashtag JRPM challenge when completing daily activities to win prizes of up to $250 in value. From the 22nd to the 30th, keep an eye out for bonus day activities. Use the hashtag JRPM bonus days to win even more prizes. The Mournville Farmer's Market is back and to get there, you head down to the Rendezvous Center every Sunday from 12 to 4 p.m. The outside version will run until September and will move indoors for the months of October and November. Coming up next, reality TV star Joshua Ovenshire was kind enough to sit down for a virtual interview about his experiences on season one of the TBS series King of the Nerds. Nothing was off the table, including questions about the casting process to the actual production of the series. Here's Liam Weeks with that exclusive interview. Um, how did you find the casting process and what was auditioning for the show like? So I was waiting in line across the way from Comic-Con and these people were like walking up and down the, uh, the aisles, like looking for, for people to, you know, interview for the, to be on this, this, this upcoming reality show and me being a egotistical, um, put me on camera kind of person. I was like, yeah, no, I'll do it. What do you got? So what was your favorite moment during the filming process? It was after that initial like welcome to Nirvana, welcome to the house. And we're like running to the house. Ivan and I were next to each other. And literally at this moment, our friendship began because he had asked me a question and I just like answered it. Like, you know, it wasn't even like a, so uh, what do you know about being a nerd? It wasn't, it was just something really random. And I just answered it, whatever I said. And he's like, okay, I think we're gonna be friends. And then like literally after that, we just were friends. Um, was there anything about the filming process that caught you by surprise? So there was something that really caught my my attention and had me surprised going into this was that you never know what it's like to be sequestered to that degree and have cameras on you all the time. Now I know like the last year of our lives have been very like, you know, sequestered and at home. And so like we get kind of a, a little bit of that cabin fever, but there was like a three week period where we couldn't be on the internet. We couldn't be on the phone. You constantly have cameras on you. And I would have never known how much that mentally breaks you down. Was there something during the filming that um, separated your experience from the other people on your cast? For me, I, I don't know if this necessarily is true for everyone else, but it was kind of a little bit of a, like an imposter syndrome because you have these, you know, it's king of the nerds. You have insanely intelligent people on the show, some of which work at NASA. <laughs> and then there's me <laughs> pretending to know as much as they can about video games and comic books. And it hardly helped me on the show. So there was a lot of imposter syndrome looking at these people and knowing how intelligent and impressive they all were and being like, I do not belong here. Um, what was being eliminated like? What was the first thing you were thinking of? Being eliminated was kind of rough because I, I had no one else to blame but myself. Like it, it wasn't a team event. It wasn't a like, you know, the luck was against me. It, and it wasn't like it was skill-based like so, like a difficult skill. It was literally a game of memory. And I kept going, if I remember correctly, I kept going to like the same box, like three times thinking it was something different. So, you know, that is always like people get angry and it's normally because it's a shortcoming in themselves and they're taking it out externally. And that 100% was me. This is the final question is just how can people find you self promo if you want? <laughs> oh, self promo if I want. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm Jovenshire. So I'm at the Jovenshire on Twitter, Instagram and on YouTube. I actually just did a really fun uh, Dungeons and Dragons series where we had uh, puppets and D&D &D at the same time. So uh, check it out. For MCTV News, Liam Weeks reporting.
And that's it for another episode of MCTV News. Join us again on Friday, June 11th, when I'll be highlighting the local business nourish. Skylar Boisseau visits one of the most popular spots in Mooreville during the summer months, the Ice Hut. William Luger looks at the transition from online schooling to in-class learning that occurred for the third time last month, and Avery Thompson checks out the Bourneville Farmer's Market. All this plus your sports highlights, seven-day weather forecasts, and more on the next installment of MCTV News. Damn, it is hot out this week. It is very hot this week. Again, like. once again, air conditioning is re recommended if you live basically anywhere in Canada at Say this time Say that one more time. Once again, air conditioning <laughs> is recommended. <laughs> <laughs> you it was hot enough. Yeah. I mean, hey, it's recommended. It is recommended. From all of us at MCTV News, I'm Anna Lesberg. And I'm Benoit Wandler. <laughs>